All right, get ready for 10 minutes on the technical stand. We are way too excited. <laughs> okay, so obviously we have taught you the technical stand up in the like base posture structure way where we blade our torso, we place our hand behind us, 45 degree angle, base in front of us, base behind, good posture, elevate the hips, bring the knee back, pivot out into a track stance. Okay, it's done. There we go, uh, we can all go home now. So um, hopefully we also mentioned in that video that that is a, uh, you know, a version of the technical stand up. What the technical stand-up really is, is a movement pattern that involves creating base behind us uh, while getting up and then you know, having enough base to resist whatever our partner is doing. So that can look like hand, it can look like elbow, it can look like shoulder, head, whatever. So when we're doing a technical stand-up in a sweep completion context, uh, so let's just say if Rory's... Okay, let's, we'll, yeah, we'll use the tripod sweep like this. So um, in this particular case, assuming there's no resistance, the technical stand-up in this case would be off of my elbow, right? I would start to withdraw this. Ideally, I'd be hooking or controlling this leg somehow, or I'd be focusing on really elevating this leg to make sure that my partner couldn't turn. Uh, so a lot of times your technical stand-up is going to want to be off your elbow when you're doing these sweep completions. So you have much more hands. so, yeah, much more so than uh, in, you know, just like the static position where we just teach a technical stand-up. We will almost always be doing, when we complete a sweep, a technical stand-up off our elbow. Uh, that will uh, allow us to grab our partner's ankle or it will allow us to control the pant leg. If we're not able to do that, we'll usually be transferring across and that's when we can start to build to our hand. And just in case uh, it's not super clear, the reason for the different hand positions, or the I shouldn't say the reason, the advantages and disadvantages of the different hand positions. My hand is the best position for creating hip mobility because it affords me the most movement. My elbow doesn't afford me as much hip movement, but has the advantage, as we just mentioned, of leaving my hand free for grabbing uh, or hand fighting or switching uh, uh, my grips. The shoulder, so this is like, a fair bit of stability because I'm lower to the ground allows my hand to move, but less hip mobility, so I can't build as much height. The shoulder will afford me the greatest range for reaching and having exchanges with my grips. It will allow me a ton of stability because I'm, I'm, I'm on the fucking ground, but my hip mobility is going to be pretty minimal, and more often than not, if we are having a battle with our partner, we're going to need to use our head as an additional post because we don't have strong, so like if, if you build up to your knees for a second here, Rory, like let's assume that I am grabbing something and I want to, get there. Like this is like, like, rotate a little bit so your head is out of the way. You can see how Rory right now is grabbing my sleeve. I just knocked him down, somehow he's choosing to keep this grip rather than post on his hand. So this is one form of a battle that we're going to have. If I try to get up right now without using my head, it's awkward because Rory can pull my sleeve back. So what I'd be looking to do in this case is move my head way over here and lock my elbow to my body. Right now, if, as Rory pulls, I use my head for base. I can re-grip him and I can start to put him down. So that's just one example of how much the technical stand-up can change just based on uh, different grip situations, different base situations, etc. So our technical stand-up will involve those elements of me deciding yeah. Do I need or can I afford to withdraw my hand and retain enough control? Let's go so just go on your knees like a like I just come up on a half start. Yep. Now, for example, let's just rotate a little bit more. In this scenario where I've got Rory's leg bound up with my left leg and his pant leg gripped with my right, building up to my hand and building up my base like this is going to be very easy to do because I control both levers with just one arm and with one leg. If I wanted to do the technical stand-up in a situation where I don't control that and Rory posts out and I just go like this, that, that's pretty useless to me. I'm actually in a more compromised position. I'm about to fight off a back take or not fight off a back take and get my back taken. Uh, so in that case, taking my hand behind me for base would not be sufficient because my partner's base was already really good. So the, the call that you're going to be making with your technical stand-up, uh, and we'll talk about base switching and post switching in, in future videos, but the call that you're going to have to make is, is the act of taking my arm and placing it wherever going to afford me an advantage in base, or is it going to buy my partner time or uh, resources, or uh, afford my partner resources to have superior base to me. So 
Oftentimes we will, when we're trying to complete a sweep, just feel like we want to get to our hand really early uh, and that will be the case with some things. Uh, octopus guard would be one example. If I build to my hand, I can build better hip height than you because I'm already connected. I'm most likely going to win. But if you build to your hand and you just completely let go of the legs and I'm then, free at this then point, this is something that breaks our heart when we see even higher belts do this stuff. All the time, they just let go of the legs. Rob knocks me down. And as we land, and here, let's go. And then this was yeah. a term that you had used a, uh, a while ago as a definition for a scramble, a race to base. It then just blew my mind as a white belt, where I was like, "Oh, the, when we're getting all those exciting exchanges, that scramble, a very loose kind of vague term that kind of describes a whole bunch of frantic movements." It's like, well, whoever got to the best base was going to win. win that. Exactly. And so let's avoid the scramble by just denying the base the whole time. Exactly. So when we're performing our technical stand-up, how you want to think of it is, I'm going to get to my technical stand-up in a way that denies them their technical stand-up. So again, to use that half guard example, because it's kind of the best one of this situation, is like in Nogi, I might be here like this and I will bind his legs together and I am absolutely not going to let go of his legs. I'm going to technical stand-up using my head and my shoulder, come down, deny him the ability to technical stand-up with a ratchet lever, right? Like this is a, I can't remember what type of ride this is in wrestling, but it's a type of leg ride. And I'm still holding his leg until I bind them and start climbing them out, etc, etc. So I would never let go of his legs in that context to get to um, the, the technical stand-up position. In, uh, just go to your butt, lift this leg up for me like I just did an X-guard sweep. I absolutely have to put my hand on the mat. This is totally worthless. If he's going to withdraw this leg, he's going to do all kinds of crazy crap to me. So when we knock somebody down out of X guard, that's an example of where I've got such powerful lever control that the technical stand like, I don't want to try to technical stand up like this because I can't elevate Rory's leg enough. He can build enough hip height to either move away or to drive into me. Um, most people tend to think of running away here because of how much fuck your jujitsu you and I have done. We actually just walk back into people mm -hmm. and knock them down with like obnoxious confidence, unfortunately. So in this case, this would not be good. This would be catastrophic. I need this because now if you want to run, it's hard to run because you can't withdraw your leg. It's hard to, for you to get your hip high enough where you can create the angle where I don't have enough wedge pressure to prevent you from turn, uh, turning and uh, pulling your leg out. And I can now complete this sweep with oh, just yeah. one leg. I don't need the additional control of both legs because the power of that lever and the angle that I'm creating is so robust. And obviously we're hitting a whole bunch of different scenarios here. So if this feels a little overwhelming, we are going to be going into much more details yeah. in all of these. But it's this important battle of how this technical stand-up can look so vastly different in all these different situations. As long as you understand that conceptually what we're trying to achieve, uh, or mechanically what we're trying to achieve is, I need to get to a superior base to my partner, which means I'm creating base behind me so that I can build either to my feet or to my knees and that I'm denying, and I'm able to then drive uh, a transfer of force into my partner while denying him the ability to do the same thing. I don't want him to get to his feet. I don't want him to get to his knees. I also don't want him to get to his elbow if we're dealing with some like, especially the gi based or spider guard based type things where I've swept someone and I've got this grip. I don't want them to get to their elbow. So whatever combination of those factors I can affect, that's how I'm going to do the technical stand-up. So we gave you kind of what it should look like what the base should look like kind of overall. We can't give you every single example because obviously it's going to change, but hopefully this allows you to understand it in a way that's actionable going forward.